Hello YouTube, Adam Taylor with uh, Texas Tulsa Connection. We are on episode number three. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the previous two episodes that really have talked about our company, really what we started, gave you a really quick brief overview of it. Today we're really starting the, uh, the episodes in which we're going to take a deeper dive into each one of those areas that we've talked about. Starting today, we wanted to go over eBay specifically and really the pallet side of it. As you've heard before, we jumped into eBay to start. We really liked eBay. It was a great entry point for our company, but quickly realized we needed a way to grow. And so that's why we started to get into the pallet side of it, which we liked a lot. Before I get too deep into that though, I wanted to talk a little bit about eBay fees. And this is an area in which I kind of struggle with how much to talk about because these fees are constantly changing. I know these videos can stay on YouTube for a long period of time. So please, this is as of March 2018, please go back and double check and make sure these fees haven't changed because they've already adjusted a little bit from when we were at eBay to what they are currently with this. And so uh, some of the fees that you have that are associated with listing, they're a little different than Amazon uh, with it, or you have a fee for actually just listing on eBay. And uh, it goes by your selling price. And so anything from 99 cents to $50, the uh, eBay fee is 8%. And then uh, anything above 50.01 or $50 and one cent, all the way up to a thousand is an extra 5% off that remaining uh, selling price, okay? And so make sure you understand that, that that's an extra 5% on top of that. Uh, but you also, for eBay, they use PayPal in terms of people paying the money, then you getting paid uh, for selling those items. And so PayPal then has an extra fee in which they charge, which is 3%. But a lot of times uh, you'll hear people, and I'll talk about this here in a few moments, uh, whether free shipping or whether you're gonna add the shipping. If you do the free shipping, they're gonna add in that 3%, including the shipping charges with that. So you don't get a deduction uh, off anything with that plus there's 30 cents per transaction so that's the bulk of it so really you've got about 11 percent uh, just as a generic term there for a generic price point and you have 30 cents per transaction for listing and selling on eBay now there are a few ways in which you can get some uh, discounts here so I'm going to go over those if you open an eBay store so if you just want to generically list on there, you can do so without a store. There's lots of benefits to a store. I'm not going to go deep into that, uh, but I would encourage you if you're going to do this, especially do pallets, to go ahead and open your own specific eBay store. But you do get a 1%, um, I guess, uh, fee reduction off of opening an eBay store. Now, what an eBay store will actually give you, I've got kind of some of the updated prices here for you. You've got really three levels. You have basic, premium, and anchor are your three levels for that. Your basics, $24.95. Uh, if you pay monthly, it's $24.95. Premium, $74.95. And anchors, $349.95. If you sign up for the yearly subscription, you'll have to pay $19.95, $59.95, and $299.95 respectively for that. The biggest thing what you get is you get a certain number of listings. So you can base those, a basic premium and anchor, off how many listings you think you're gonna do. Um, for that per month, your basic is 250, your premium is 1,000, your anchor is 10,000. So that'll just kind of give you a, a ballpark. And you can look at those whether you think you're gonna list just a few per month. You probably don't need a store. For us, it became important that we were hopefully going to list a whole bunch. And so we started off uh, opening a store and start off with the basic uh, for that, which seemed to work well for us just in terms of our size and the scale that we were going to, uh, to work off of. So you get a 1% deduction so you'd go from 11% to 10% but you also have a way to get that down into the single digits and that is to receive a, uh, a top seller status which you gain an extra 1% off of and a lot of it is just how fast you ship things out uh, your uh, um, return rate any type of, of incidences which you have um, but you have to do that consistently and so you can gain that top seller status but you can also lose that top seller status depending on uh, I guess how quality you are uh, with it. I've got some of the things that they do. You've got to have at least uh, 100 transactions U.S. to get top seller, uh, at least $1,000 in sale over a 12-month uh, period of time. Um, you've got to give tracking numbers. You've got to uh, have at least 95% transactions within the last three months uh, for that. 
So you've got some different things. Your defect rate, like I mentioned a while ago, has to be below 0.5%. Um, so you also have to give a money back guarantee and um, free returns with that. So those are just some of the things uh, to receive that. Typically, you'll get it if you're a normal seller. Obviously, if you're uh, sitting on items, not shipping them out, you're gonna have a whole lot of other problems, but it takes a little bit to get there, but it's something pretty easily managed if you're gonna ship out uh, any number, especially if you're doing pallets, you're, you're highly likely to, uh, to meet that within a, a few months period of time uh, with that. A great place to go, and I'll put this actually in the comments section at the bottom of this video, is a, a website called finalfeecalc.com, F-I-N-A-L-F-E-E-C-A-L-C.com, and it actually will allow you to enter all those different things which I mentioned, whether you're a top seller, you have a store, uh, the price, all those things, and then actually figure up your fees uh, for each individual product. So it's a great place, good resource to use. I'd encourage you to do that because you want to make sure the price that you're listing it for is something you're going to make money off of. You don't want to go ahead and miscalculate the shipping or anything on that. And so that is important to go through and check those things. So I'd encourage you to look at that website uh, before you do it. But kind of back to where I started at, why choose pallets? For us, it was always about scalability. How do we, are we able to find enough products in order to scale the business? Uh, I don't know if, if you've started eBay at all. You know, for us, it, essentially, it was boom or bust when we're going to garage sales, uh, Goodwill, any other place in which we were going to acquire products. There'd be times we would find a whole bunch, and there'd be times we might walk out with nothing. And so it was, we found it difficult to scale because of those problems. And so Palace was a way in which we knew we can get a consistent flow of inventory, and uh, we felt like it was uh, something that we could use because we could essentially, instead of buying one pallet, buy three pallets or buy six or buy 10. And so we could essentially grow as fast as we wanted to just by purchasing more pallets. We weren't at the mercy of going to any of other places and saying, well, we may find a lot of products and we may find nothing. And so for us, it just made sense. The two places which we purchased our pallets from, we talked about was uh, Elite Liquidation out of Oklahoma City. They were great. They were more of a smaller scale operation. Uh, typically general merchandise, you couldn't get very specific. They did not carry Manifest, but it is what we started. We live in Tulsa. There was a short drive down there. We can get several pallets in a short amount of time and come back and start listing. So we started off there. We did move on up to discount truckloads, which uh, was in the Metroplex area. And it was great because you can go down there, they have a huge warehouse. They get a ton of inventory. You can pick whatever kind you wanted to, general merchandise, bedding, electronics, you name it, they've got it. You can be more specific and you want uh, Walmart, you want Amazon, Groupon, whatever it is you're looking for. They had a ton of it typically and got really a consistent amount of that. It wasn't like they would have a ton one time, which we ran into with the late liquidation. The next time you come, there was almost nothing. You could pretty well, I uh, guarantee they were going to have what you were looking for. And so we really liked discount truckloads. I had a guy, uh, Paul Stansberry was his name, who we dealt with. Great guy. He would easily work with us on what we were wanting. And um, so I would, I would definitely recommend them if that's something you're wanting to. And they also will ship it to you. We, uh, we got into where we would ship it, sight and scene, call them up. This is what we're looking for. Uh, this is our price range, and we would get that sent over to us, and it would, they can do it pretty quick within a couple, two or three days. So it was a really, really great place. Um, enjoyed a whole lot, and uh, would definitely, like I said, recommend them to you if you're getting into that. Um, some specific information on the pallets, kind of some uh, numbers of actually the, uh, the number of products on there, the price range. Um, these were almost all manifest. In fact, the bulk of their pallets are manifest. They do have some general merchandise that do not have manifest, but the bulk of them were, which was really nice to see exactly what was in there because you know how done pallets, they pack everything up really high around the sides. There's this big hole in the middle and nothing in there. And so you're just trying to kind of guess how many items are actually in the pallet in a lot of cases. So electronics, typically you'd get maybe 60 or 70 items per pallet. Those rows, the biggest range were electronics. The cheapest were around $1,000 all the way up to about $2,500. Um, but the amount of profits you could make is, is pretty high. The only negative with electronics, you never know what's broken. In fact, you always have to worry about when you're shipping it, whether something gets broken. Uh, bedding, we were the least successful with the bedding side, maybe 30 or 40 items, and, and they're relatively cheap, three to $400. Um, your Amazon, kind of the same way. There was more, Amazon typically is your general merchandise, just like what your Walmart might be. 
um, 50 or 60 items, three to four hundred dollars, but there's a, a decent range there. You can get some nicer stuff for probably in the five to six hundred dollar range uh, with that. But you also then have some Groupon, which were, were similar price range, similar product numbers uh, with that. But you do have a manifest. You can see how many items are in there. You know, they might be missing one or two, but typically we had no problems um, with with one or two items missing. Yeah, even, you know, here I hear horror stories that it's always the most expensive item missing. We didn't run into that personally. And so we had good experiences with the manifested side of that. So those worked out well. Um, our process for pallets, so we would receive the pallet in. It's always the, the fun part. They show up, you're breaking them open, but it's also probably the most time consuming. So you're trying to sort out uh, what each thing is, whether they're working or not, and with that. And so we would sort them by the categories. So we got electronics. We might put all the drones over here. We might get all the, the headphones over here. Uh, any type of, of computer, um, I guess, accessories we would put in a different spot. And so we would start sorting out, trying to figure out what we had there. The most difficult part probably is testing each item. That, that takes a while, but it's probably one of the most important things. As a customer, what's very, very frustrating is the fact that you get something in and it doesn't work. And so for eBay, everything relies upon feedback. You've got to have quality feedback. It's like Amazon. You get the individual reviews for the product. For eBay, it's totally different. They review you as a seller. And so being able to have a, a good feedback rating on eBay as a seller is very, very important. So we wanted to make sure what we were listing, um, exactly the description of it, matched the, the real, um, I guess, what, what the product was, what shape it was in when we are actually going to, uh, to ship it out. And so we spent a lot of time testing, checking the quality of that. Um, how many items were broken, what we couldn't list. Typically, we'd run around 5% were things that just were irreparable um, or they just weren't sellable. So you couldn't even sell them in just you know the worst condition possible. We didn't feel comfortable with it. And so we would essentially um, toss those items or, uh, or give them away to anybody who just didn't care. I mean, we've got some friends around here that like picking up those odds and ends, and so we would give them to them uh, as well. The listing part, what we did is we actually, there's, there's two families that were in this, it was my uh, my wife and I, then my sister and uh, brother-in-law. And so for us, when we would get them, we would ship some that would be sent straight to her house in Texas, some would be sent straight to us as we, we tried to create kind of the old assembly line. As my wife um, would set up uh, the photo area, and so on the weekend, she would try to photograph as many items as possible. Um, then during the week, and I would start on the weekend, but one of the big things we kind of found out, and whether it's true or not, I felt like it was, is trying to list consistently something every day. We would try to put five or ten items up from our side of it every single day on eBay. And so she would photograph everything on the weekends. We would store them on the computer. Then every day I'd go in there and I just would follow through and uh, pull those pictures, start creating the listing. I would have the product, the description, I would have to research it, find out all the information to make sure I put the correct uh, description on eBay. And so every day it was come home, we would ship stuff out, then I would start relisting items to, uh, to make sure we had plenty of inventory uh, to sell on there. And so it really worked out well. The, the, the photographing part is a time consuming deal. You're talking about cleaning off the labels, um, just in general cleaning it up, making sure it looks presentable at that time. Uh, making sure that there was anything we may have missed in the testing side with that. And so trying to get it in the best best possible condition. We uh, created a photo box and had different lights in there, had a, a white background, and so you could manipulate it, really get rid of any shadows. And so that it takes a lot of work uh, with it, but you need to have somebody who's really good at that. And she was really, really good and uh, made the products look really, really well with it. A big thing with that is make sure you photograph any flaws. So if there's a scratch, a mark, a dent, Whatever it is, make sure you document that. You don't want the customer to get that product in and uh, there's a flaw in there that you didn't catch, you didn't notice, and uh, you didn't show to them because those photographs are the only way in which they're actually going to see the product before they've actually purchased it. So want to make sure you document every single thing and so you can't miss stuff with that. Um, and then my job, like I said, was kind of optimize the listing, create those with it. Uh, researching some of the stuff you have no idea what it is. You're literally figuring it out for the first time. It's kind of fun, kind of scary though, because you're going to be describing something you don't know what it is. And so it's important that you spend time on the internet. It's great. You can find almost anything, type in the model number, item number, uh, whatever the brand name is, and you can typically find that. 
Uh, Amazon is a great resource because they've got everything and so you can kind of back in, at least figure out what it is before you go to the manufacturer's website and uh, start tracking stuff down. Um, with it, you're also going to uh, list the uh, condition of it, uh, like new, uh, slightly used, and uh, everything on that. So you want to make sure you list that accurately um, for the customer. And then last is shipping. We went back and forth between listing it as free shipping and then going from basically calculating out exactly what the uh, the customer would be paying for that. You know, back and forth on it, you'll, you'll probably see other videos and other blogs that will talk about, hey, free shipping is the way to go. Um, we had some success with that. In fact, that was the majority of it. And what we would do is we would you know, the great thing about Tulsa is you're right here in the middle of the United States. And so we would try to find a ballpark price. If Obviously, if it's east or west coast, if it sells there, it's going to be on the, the outer fringe. And so you're really trying to kind of get a, a middle ground there. It's hard to, if you always charge the max amount, you're probably going to be higher than your competition and you're going to have a tough time selling it. And so you're trying to find that happy area where if it sells, uh, maybe a little closer. Texas, obviously, we sell a lot of products there. If it sells uh, to Texas, you're probably making more off the shipping, a little more than the selling price. If you're actually going to uh, the East Coast or West Coast for us, we found we would typically lose a little bit of money off the shipping, but typically we were still fine because of the uh, the price that we had it listed for would cover that for us. And so you kind of have that middle ground there and, and not necessarily going to either extreme with that. Um, whether it helps sales or not, probably questionable. But, but we felt like we had to do it that way to keep up with the competition. We did do a fair amount, especially some of the heavier items that we would go ahead and calculate in. You know, of course, the size, the weight, the, 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 bo the box we would ship it in, the packaging, all that stuff. And um, we would put that into eBay and they'll figure it out for you when the person is actually looking at the item and when they actually purchase it, what the extra charge would be. So we went back and forth and, and we liked both those. But a lot of us, we, we chose a lot of the things we did were based on the size and the weight of it. Um, for that. Uh, materials needing for this. Anytime we do an eBay, the biggest thing is we saved a lot of our, our Amazon boxes that uh, we would purchase. I'm a big Amazon buyer. We buy a lot of our stuff. I don't know about you, but, but that's just kind of the way we do things with it. So we keep those, but to be more professional, we actually would get on and purchase boxes online. And you, the larger quantities, you buy them in bulk, you can get them for a decent price. But we would buy, I think we had probably 10 to 15 different sizes of uh, boxes that we always kept on hand. And so depending on the item, we could put in there. But some of the, uh, the packing materials and stuff, you know, peanuts, we mentioned boxes, bubble wrap. Um, actually, if you go down to U-Haul, you can get those big um, it, they're boxes, I guess, of, of paper that's used to wrap up items to keep them safe while you're uh, while you're moving. We would use those as just kind of space fillers, dirt cheap, 20 bucks. I mean, it was several hundred sheets in there. That thing lasts forever. And so that's a, a big money saving deal um, with that. Uh, we also bought a scale to weigh things that's uh, really important, 10 to $20 maybe on Amazon. They're, they're really pretty decently priced. Then we created feedback inserts that would have our information, ways to contact us. That way, if there's any problem, we want to, to fix that problem, whether we're going to refund, ask you to return it, whatever it is, customer service has to be number one on eBay. And so we would go above and beyond. And so we put these little insert cards. I should have brought one with me. But um, that would essentially list our company, talk about ways to, uh, to get a hold of us, uh, remind them if there's any problems, please contact us before leaving a negative review because you'll see some on there. I mean, the first thing they do is they want to leave a negative review, hit you, and then later come back. Well, it's much easier to let us fix it in the front end, so that was our encouragement for it, uh, with it. But um, but for us, customer service was top, and so a return, even though we might find the return sometimes to be questionable, the reasoning for it, we would pretty much always, always accept it because we wanted to take care of our feedback. That was a way to grow our business. If you're not doing that, then we felt like, hey, you take a couple bad feedback um, reviews and that just hurts you for future sales. And so it's just not worth it to do that. So it's better to eat that cost than it was to, uh, to argue with a customer. Kind of some of the, the base data from selling these pallets. Like I said, I liked it a lot. I felt like it was something that was scalable. I uh, felt like it was something in which you could do. Uh, it does keep you busy, especially when you're shipping out. We would typically, I mean, for us, we were still pretty small scale. Like I said, my sister was doing it in Texas. Individually, 
we would typically find we could probably sell maybe 10 a day um, with that, which is not too bad for a, a small, small operation. You hit the middle of the week, your Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you might be down close to maybe five items, but a lot of it just would correlate to, uh, to how many items you have listed. We would find that we would try to sell through, um, you know, maybe five to 10% um, of our products really every single um, week. And so we would try to, to kind of max that. And that really stays pretty true as a whole um, over time. Now, obviously, sometimes you have better quality stuff that sells a little faster, and sometimes you have uh, stuff that's just not as desirable, and it may go a little slower. But that's typical for us, what we found. Uh, our return on investment, uh, we could typically make uh, two to $300 off a pallet. Some of that varies, but that's what we found to be true. Um, for how long it took to sell each pallet, for everything to go, and really, I don't know if we ever had a pallet in which everything sold, but two to three months in which you're gonna find out all the sellable stuff will be gone. And so anything after that, we would find would just sit around forever. We actually would just have a garage sale at the end of the summer and uh, and get rid of all the stuff that didn't sell so it wasn't clogging up our, our attic and our storage system that we had. Um, we would ship every single day. I think that's really important. Um, you can read on some stuff which people aren't, aren't shipped maybe every other day. For us, we really try to, to go above and beyond and take care of the customer. And so we would sell, or excuse me, we would ship things every day. So daily we were coming home, that day we'd eat dinner as a family. We would go pack stuff up, get it boxed, get it ready to go, go ahead and put it in the vehicle. So we'd go on the way to work the next day. We'd just swing by FedEx, USPS, UPS, whatever it was, drop it off and continue going on and be done with it for the day. And then the, and actually after we would do that, then we would start listing again for that. Um, you know, our, our turnaround time on most products was pretty quick. It, it sold, the, the bulk of things sold really, really fast. I mean, there are some things in which you may be sitting on a price trying to get maximum profit for. That may sit around for, for two to three weeks, upwards of maybe a month if it's, a, if it's just a slow seller. But like I said, if it's big stuff, you can, you can ask for a premium price for it. But usually, uh, it, would, it was pretty quick turnaround time uh, on that, but a lot of it had to do with how aggressive we were going to try and sell those items. And so at times, especially early on, we just wanted profit. Uh, over time, we realized we wanted to maximize that profit, and so we would price things uh, a lot better. And you just you get better at it over time. And so um, we, we enjoyed the pallet side. Uh, we don't currently do pallets right now just because that was a, a platform for us for moving over to the Amazon. For, and I mentioned in the prior videos, we want something in which we can continue to scale. The only real negative that I, well, probably two negatives. One, you never know what you're getting in the pallets. That's probably your first negative because it's it's a little bit of a hit or miss. Even though you may know the category, you don't always know. You gotta manifest. The quality of that product just can vary so much, but we did enjoy it. But number two is to grow the eBay pallet side of it is that you only can grow is if you are physically working. So you're physically shipping stuff out, you're physically listing items. Um, I know you can get to some fulfillment centers and do some of those things for you. Um, we thought about that, we talked about it, but we chose to go the Amazon way and their fulfillment side, which is just, it's, it's a smooth deal. It's really easy to get into, really easy to, uh, to work through. Um, the fees and stuff are a little higher, but, but we find them to be very competitive uh, through everything else. So. I um, hope that was informational for you guys. Uh, if you have questions, please put those in the comments below. Like I said, glad to hear from you. Love to, uh, to go back and answer those, and we will get to everybody's question with it. Uh, look forward to sharing some more information with you next week, and uh, appreciate you watching.